Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Crescendo, a podcast that amplifies the voices of women. I'm your host, Rachel Lubchansky, and I am so happy to be on this journey with you. In each episode, we speak with women who have moved through the challenges and triumphs of living a life that is in alignment with who they are at their core. You'll hear from women who are breaking down barriers, making a difference in the world, and living a life of purpose on purpose. I hope that the crescendo stories you hear on this show will inspire you, empower you, and guide you to step into the most authentic, full, and beautiful expression of your own voice. My guest today is one of my industry favorites, and I am so excited for you all to meet her. Melissa Snow is a business relationship strategist dedicated to empowering women in entrepreneurship. She founded the Powerful Women Rising Community, which provides female business owners with essential support and resources for business growth. Melissa's other mission is to revolutionize networking, promoting authenticity and genuine connections over sleazy sales tactics. Can't wait to talk all about that. She lives in Colorado Springs with her husband, two dogs, and three cats, and she loves iced coffee, true crime, Taylor Swift, and buying books she'll never read. (laughs) Well, welcome, Melissa. I am really happy to have you on the show. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be talking to you today. I feel like you told us a lot of really fun facts about you in your bio. Um, Tell us a little bit about more about who you are that I didn't just sort of rattle off. Yeah, I I loved what you said in your introduction when you were talking about authenticity and about getting to a place where you feel like your life and what you're doing is aligned with who you truly are at the core. As you were talking about that, I was thinking about the many chapters of me that there have been and how many of those chapters were really me trying to force my square peg into a round hole. You know, it took me five and a half years to graduate from college. I changed my major six times because I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I just went to college because that's what you were supposed to do, you know? And there are a lot of examples like that throughout my life. And, um, you know, got a job full time working for someone else because that's what you were supposed to do. Didn't even occur to me that it was an option. Um, When I met my husband, he told me very early on that he didn't want to have kids. And I was like, wait, that's a choice. Like we can just choose that. So there was a lot of experiences throughout my life of realizing like, who am I really? How much of what I think is me is really just like the stories that I've been told and other people's ideas of who I should be. Um, So it's just interesting to think of all the different versions of me that there have been. But Here I am now, um, had many different careers. I started out as a high school English teacher. I did that for four years. Um, I worked as a personal injury paralegal for a really long time. That was what led to me starting my first business, which was a um, business doing contract paralegal work for personal injury attorneys. After that, I got my coaching certification. I was a dating coach for women for six years, which was super fun. And then a couple of years ago, I transitioned into the business space to create the powerful women rising community. Beautiful. So you and I actually haven't we've we've talked quite a bit in our um, journeys over the past few years, um, but you and I haven't really talked about those earlier years where some of those expectations started to unravel. I also had similar experience um, at eighteen years old. Went to college, did the thing that I was supposed to do. And after freshman year, called my dad and was like, you know what, this is not going to work for me. And I'm going to take a year off. And that was like really um, unexpected in our family. Like you just go to college and you get through college. Well, what are you going to do for a year? Right. And um, so I love hearing about that part of you. How did things start to unravel for you? Like, how did you start to challenge that notion that you are supposed to be and do certain things? You know, part of it was hearing from other people, which is one of the reasons I love the concept of your show so much is because I think the more we see other people doing things a different way, it gives us permission to do it a different way. You know, like I said, with that conversation with my husband, he was like, no, I don't want to have kids. And I was like, what? Like, that was really when I figured out 
oh, you can make a choice. You know, it's not just you do everything that you're supposed to do. Um, and that was a big, big thing for me in business too, um, which is my most recent experience to answer your question from was really trying to grow a business the way that everybody else said you were supposed to grow a business. And this idea that there are certain traits that you have to have, especially as a woman, in order to be successful as an entrepreneur. And really just always trying to force myself to be that person. Like I spent so much time and effort and energy and programs just trying to figure out how to make myself be a morning person. And finally, I was like, <laughs> how about you're just not a morning person? Like, how about your day starts at 930? And like, why is that a problem? You know, so even something as simple as that, it was really a process of just figuring out. I mean, I'm simplifying it dramatically because I've had many experiences that I know a lot of other business owners have had where we are in containers with other women and we're being told by experts, this is how you do it. The other women are doing it that way and they're having a lot of success. And I either couldn't get myself to do it that way or I was doing everything I was told to do and I still wasn't having success. So it's been a long process of moving through that shame and that like what's wrong with me that this isn't working for me. And then finally getting to a place I remember somebody saying to me, like, why do you keep going to other people to find the answers about your business? Like, would you ever go to somebody else to ask them, like, what should I do with my life? No, because nobody knows your life like you know your life. Nobody knows what you want. Nobody knows what you value. Nobody knows your experiences like you do. So why do you keep going to all these other people trying to find the answers about your business? And I was like, oh, I don't know. I mean, there was a lot to it, right? I didn't trust myself. I had a lot of imposter syndrome. I wanted to believe that there was a right answer because that would have made being successful in business much easier. Oh my gosh, wouldn't it though? <laughs> But I never found it until I got to that place. It was really just like, what do I want to do and how do I want to do it and learn to block out a lot of the noise that I think tends to distract us from that. Yeah, this is so good because I think that there's really that fine line of looking to the experts and getting that that feeling of permission that you were talking about earlier, like, oh, somebody else has done this before me. They have excuse me, they have laid the foundation, right? This path is available to me. And then the the other side of the line being, okay, yes, it's available. And like, we can't just buy somebody's blueprint, right? What worked for them doesn't necessarily work for us. And so there is this really beautiful, delicate dance of of looking outside for some level of permission, right? That I think so many of us feel like we need and looking inside and really I have found and tell me if this resonates for you, but building a business I think has been more a personal growth journey than anything else. Absolutely. Yes. And it's something that a lot of people who are not entrepreneurs who have never started a business like from nothing, like it literally didn't exist until you decided you were going to start it. It's hard for people to understand really everything that goes into it and the ups and the downs and the mind drama and that today everything is great and tomorrow everything is horrible. And like, it's exhausting sometimes, but it has, yes, it has been huge for personal growth in many ways. Okay, Melissa. So you were a dating coach for the last six years, and then you shifted into the space of supporting women in business. Tell me a little bit about that transition. Yeah, it actually is really interesting because a lot of what I worked with my dating coaching clients on is very similar to what I work with my business clients on. It's really not that different in terms of the blocks and the obstacles that get in our way and the mindset ruts that we get in that are sabotaging us without us realizing it, um, our struggles with having boundaries. Like all of it is very similar in business. It just shows up in a different way. So it's interesting how much of that has translated over. But for me, the biggest reason why I transitioned my business is it was becoming more and more apparent to me that I was passionate about empowering my clients, much more passionate about empowering them than I was about 
helping them find love. Um, and so my company, my dating coaching company was called Love Starts Here. And that was the concept from the very beginning was you're coming to me because you want to know why you keep attracting all these same types of men over and over again and why you can't find what you're looking for. Let's start with you. Like what's going on with you um, that is making you a magnet for these people? Um, and not from a, a blame standpoint, but from a like, where can you take responsibility and where can you make some changes to start attracting something different? And again, very similar in business. When I have people who are not getting new clients or they're not getting new people in their audience or um, they're not getting a lot of engagement on social media. It's like, okay, let's look at what's going on with you when you're showing up in these spaces that is contributing to these results. And so I really was leaning so much more into the how do we empower you? How do we help you be more secure? How do we help you get really clear on what you want and how to get it? And it was translating for a lot of these women into areas of their life that had nothing to do with love relationships. Like a lot of them were getting to a point where they were just like, my life is really great. If I find somebody to share it with, that would be super. But if I don't, that's also super. And so I was like, okay, I think we're onto something here. So transitioning to the business space, um, particularly in the way that I did it, because um, I don't call myself a business coach, um, although I, I can provide business coaching. Um, but really, it's about empowering female entrepreneurs to find their own answers and figure out how they want to run their business and help them be successful growing in the way that they want to grow, not in the way that some like master guru says that they have to do it. And to be clear, when I talk about finding your own answers, I just have to put this disclaimer on it because one thing that makes me crazy in the coaching industry is the response to I don't know being, well, if you did know, what would the answer be? <laughs> that is a great response in a lot of circumstances. But when you are starting or running a business, there are things that you don't know, right? Like we don't know how to set up a funnel. Some, I didn't even know what a funnel was. I'd been in business for two years before I had a conversation with somebody who mentioned business insurance. And I was like, I'm sorry, business who? So like there are things that you don't know. And there are times that it totally makes sense to hire someone who knows how to do those things and can help teach you how to do those things. And you can learn from they're already done all the trial and error and made the mistakes and been like, here's what worked for me, right? So it's not all just like, figure it out. You know all the answers because there's lots of answers that you don't know. But ultimately, all of that has to be filtered through your own self, your own values, your own mission to make sure like whatever is coming in is in alignment with you and not just you doing something because you're told that's the right way to do it. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that was a lot <laughs> to all of that. Yeah, no, so much of this resonates for me and I'm sure with so many of the listeners here as well, because this idea of, um, again, like there are certain aspects of, right, like figuring out how you want your, how you want to show up in the world is a very personal decision related to your business, right? And only you can answer that, but you can answer it with guidance. But then like setting up a spreadsheet, like, no, not everybody needs to become an Excel expert or know exactly even what you should be tracking or measuring or whatever. Um, and so I think that there's just, when you're a newer entrepreneur um, or business owner, there's just a lot of that kind of stuff to learn and to navigate and to source out resources for um, and support on. You have, as you've shifted, really become known as this brilliant networker, like somebody who's very well respected in the community for authentic networking. Um, I personally very much admire how you show up. Um, it feels it feels just completely real, like anyone who speaks to Melissa Snow is speaking directly to Melissa Snow. Like there's no facade, there's no, there are no pretenses or whatever. How did you, how did you come into feeling so comfortable? in showing up 
like that and helping other people feel comfortable doing the same. A lot of therapy. <laughs> that's, a, that's a significant part of the honest answer. I'm cracking up while you're ans asking that question because I just keep picturing the whole time you're talking about me our call yesterday where like halfway through I realized that my sweater was on backwards and I was like oh <laughs> my sweater's on backwards excuse me while I turn it around in the middle of our zoom call cool but, um, okay so before you answer I mean but that's the thing is I think so often we see business owners and the truth is we have no idea what's going on behind the screen behind the curtain and I think it's really a disservice to all the women out there who are trying to figure it out, who are trying to start their thing. Like they're smart, they're big hearted, they're experts, they've got something and they just want to be able to make money from it so that they can support their families, make an impact in the world, support other people, like just do their thing so that they're fulfilled, right? And I think it's such a disservice when we don't, um, when we don't just show up in our full realness, right? Like sometimes our shirts are on backwards. And what's funny enough, Melissa, is I think I mentioned this last night. I was out shopping with a friend yesterday and I tried on some clothes. And when I got home, I realized that I had put my shirt on backwards as well. Like after I came out of the dressing room. And of course, nobody told me at the next store that I went to, but whatever. Um, but I think that that's what makes you so relatable is that you're like, oh, excuse me, I'm just going to turn my shirt around. Um, and that's that's what people need to see. Right. But not everybody's comfortable doing that. So how did you come to this level of comfort and and just being true to who you are in any environment? Yeah, that's a probably a very long answer, because I feel like that process has been going on for the last 42 years since I came on this earth of really figuring out like who am I really and is it okay that I'm that person um I can remember as far back to kindergarten feeling like there was something wrong with me like everyone else was normal but I wasn't and I felt that for a lot of different reasons throughout my life um I am neurodivergent in multiple ways. I'm highly gifted, but I also have ADHD, which is a very interesting combination to navigate the world with. Um, I have suffered from really severe depression since I was about 12 um, that really wasn't well medicated until I was about 30. And all of that is a really important piece of this for me because I feel like it is so important for people to know when they look at people like you and I that are like, oh my gosh, she's so successful. She's amazing, but I can't be like her because X, Y, Z, right? Because I have ADHD, because I'm on the autism spectrum, because I am shy or I'm not funny or I'm an introvert or whatever, you know, like I, in most situations, am an introvert. I can be very shy. I do not enjoy a room full of strangers that you just stick me in and are like, go meet people. Like that is not my personality at all. And it's funny, I went to this women's conference last year and I heard these women talking about me who I'd never met before. Um, and basically what they were saying was that they expected me to be a lot friendlier than I was. And it was so interesting to me after I was done having my feelings hurt because I was like, I don't think it's that I wasn't as friendly as they were expecting me to be. I'm incredibly friendly. I think they were just because there's this perception of like, oh, she's the networking queen. People expect that I'm going to be this like peppy, bubbly, meeting everybody, knowing everybody, having a lot of really great fake small talk conversations and schmoozing. Like they have an idea in their head of what I'm going to be and I'm not it. And that is really important to me to not be it because I want all the other women who are not those things to be like, okay, if she can do what she's doing, I can probably be me and do what I'm doing too. And so the more I showed up authentically and was accepted as my authentic self 
and also received a lot of feedback from people that my being authentic was giving them more permission to be authentic. And so it just kind of compounded from there. But I also had to do a fair amount of mindset work to get over the fact that when you show up authentically, there are going to be people that love it and there are going to be people that really don't love it. And this is one of the things I used to talk to my dating coaching clients about because we would talk about putting certain things on their online dating profile. And they would say, I don't want to put that on my profile because I don't want to turn people off. Like, what if that makes somebody not want to talk to me? I'm like, okay, but that's you. Like, that's that's the real you. And so if you're putting that out there and that makes somebody be like, oh, I'm not swiping right on her. Like, that's great. That's one less we have to sift through, right? Because that was never going to be your man. And so I just try to keep that in mind for myself when I show up authentically and it's not well received. And there are people who are like, oh my gosh, get me away from that. I'm like, good. Like, I love that, honestly, because there's nothing wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with them that I'm not their vibe. They're just recognizing you're not the vibe. And so let's not waste each other's time. And that's okay. Like, we can be okay with that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I talk a lot about niching in my in my work with clients. And and I think that that's part of it is that we really do attract our people when we show up in our full authenticity. Um, and and the goal is to turn people off or to turn people away on some level. Right. We don't want to offend people, um, but not being for everyone is actually a good thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like that. I always see that meme go around Facebook every once in a while. That's like, why are you so concerned that not everyone likes you? Because you don't like everyone. <laughs> like fair, very fair. Absolutely. Um, okay. So you have a really fun saying in your business about networking and sales. If you'll share it here with our listeners and a little bit about how that came to be, because you're really known for this. Yeah. So one of the things I say all the time is that I teach people how to network like a human and not like a salesy weirdo. And it started out actually like a human and not like a weirdo. The problem was a lot of people who identified as weirdos are like my people. Right? Like I would <laughs> consider myself a weirdo in a lot of ways. And so people would come and be like, OK, but like, can I come? Because I'm kind of a weirdo. And I was like, yes, like all the weirdos should come. So I had to add the salesy part in there to be very specific. And everybody knows exactly what a salesy weirdo is. Like you have your vision of that person. And, it, you know, of course, it used to be called like the car salesman or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. we all know now somebody who has who has done salesy weirdo things and behaviors and um, is a total turnoff. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially if you've ever been to a networking event, I'm sure you've met a salesy weirdo like this is the person who's handing out their business card to everybody without even asking them like what their name is. Um, this is the person who you're like afraid to post anything on social media because like you post that you have a headache or like, man, I've had this headache for three days and it won't go away. Anyone have any ideas? And now they're like in your DMs with their supplements and their things, right? Like there's a lot of different salesy weirdo type of behavior, but at the core of it, it's really about the intention. And this is one of the things we talk about a lot in the Powerful Women Rising community because a lot of times women are afraid that by selling, they're going to be a salesy weirdo. And they're not the same thing. The difference is the intention behind it. When someone is coming with the intention of getting something from you, taking something from you, um, you know, that kind of needy, desperate, I got to make a sale and I'm trying really hard energy and selling from there versus someone who's selling from a place of like, I see you. I hear what's going on with you. I recognize your pain and I know that I have a solution and I would love to share my solution with you because um, I think it would really help you and we can have a conversation about it and you can make whatever decision is right for me. Like that's a very different energy and usually is the distinction between I'm selling versus I'm being a salesy weirdo. Yeah, totally. And I think like so many people are turned off by this word selling 
And I think if we just make this small shift to the word serving, then it takes maybe the pressure off of people to feel like they have to go out and catch one. Like I'm just like picturing a fishing line like, oh, did you get one? You know, Um, but when we show up in that place of service that you're describing, then it's really just about listening, learning, hearing what people need. And then if we have what they need, then we can offer to support them from that place of like, oh, I really want to help you. Um, So I love that. Do you feel like you've really found your place in business now in terms of feeling like you can do the work that serves you and serve other serves others in a fully authentic way? I do. Yeah. It's funny you asked me that question because my, the episode of the Powerful Women Rising podcast that came out this week was about imposter syndrome. And I was having a conversation with my husband about this last night and the imposter syndrome that I used to feel when someone would reach out to me with a business question or like, Hey, can I get, you know, can we do a strategy session? Like someone like you who I'm like, wow, she's like an expert and she's asking me for help. Like what is going on here? Um, well, part of that obviously is it's much easier to manage other people's stuff than it is our own, right? Of course. Isn't that but also, truth? I'm like, why do you think you don't know what you're doing? Like, this is not day one here. Um, and it's been such a journey of figuring out not only what works. I feel like that was my focus for so long is like, what's going to work? What's the thing that's going to bring people onto my email list? What's the thing that's going to convert those people to paying clients? What's going to work? And I remember someone asking me at one point when I was trying to figure out some offers and some other things, what do you want to do? And it seemed like such a weird question to me. Like, why are you even asking that? That's not relevant to this conversation. And now I realize in the business that I've created in Powerful Women Rising, everything that I'm doing is something that I want to do. There is not, I used to have as a dating coach mornings that I would wake up and I would be like, like, I don't want to meet with this client. I don't want to run this group. I don't want to do this webinar, like whatever it was. I just didn't want to do it. And I never feel like that in this business. Every morning I wake up and believe me, people, I used to hear people say this and be like, okay, whatever. So I get it. But I truly like almost every day wake up and I'm like, this is so awesome. Like, I can't wait to get on my calls. I can't wait to see my people. I can't wait to see what people are talking about in the Facebook group. Like, I just love all of it because I have created it from that place of like, not only considering what do people want and what do people need, but also like, what do I want to do and where do I know that my strengths are? And creating a community is definitely one of my strengths. Mm, yes, it is. I can say from experience, the Powerful Women Rising community is a very special place filled with just incredible women that you've attracted in who are just as authentic as you, who are showing up at various stages of business, um, various experiences in life. And everybody's there to support each other, to learn together, to grow together. Um, And I would say it's very rare to find a place where you can feel safe in full vulnerability. And you've really created that space with the Powerful Women Rising community. So congrats to you on that and for really navigating this business journey and um, going through all the variations to get to where you are today. That's, it's a huge, it's a huge accomplishment and it's a testament to your sense of resilience of really sticking with it to figure out, um, you know, where do all those seemingly disparate things come together, right? Where you, like you were just describing your skills, your desires, your passions with the ways that you can serve best, your your ability to create space for others and community and bring people together. And that that helps those people grow in their goals and things. And so, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm really happy for you. And thank you so much for sharing this story with my listeners. 
Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for, I always love chatting with you, but I love sharing that information too about the part of my story that most people don't hear because I think it's, it's an important part. And I hope that there are people that hear it and it resonates with them and they're like, okay, maybe I can be a little bit more myself today. Beautiful. I hope so too. You know, each of us has um, our beginnings and so many of us have those messy stories of our past. And um, I think that the more that we show up and share them, and like you said at the beginning, really help give others permission to show up and share their stories too, whatever they are, because each of these, I believe that each of these stories are really the stepping stones to who we become today. And um, when you're when you're in this place of living an authentic life that feels really good for you and is in service of others. I think that, you know, it's just such a beautiful place to have gotten. And so there's really no shame in, uh, in those early stepping stones that become part of the foundation of who we are. Absolutely. There's one last question I want to ask you as I asked all of my guests, which is what is one tip you have for other women who are striving to honor their authentic voice right now? Oh, that's a great question. I think it would be to ask yourself, whose voice is this? Like when you have a thought, when you have something that comes up that says you shouldn't say that, or they don't want you in this room, you don't belong here, you shouldn't be here, you don't look pretty enough, like whatever it is, to ask yourself, like whose voice is that really? Whose story is that? Because Most of the time, it's not yours. It's one that either someone else told you or you just interpreted from what someone else said or did. And it has stuck with you for so long. And so many of those stories are what stands between us and being able to show our authentic selves to the world. And they're stories that aren't even ours. So fantastic. Thank you for sharing that tip. I hope you all heard that one loud and clear and feel more comfortable showing up boldly with your stories and with your voice. Melissa, will you just share how people can connect with you, learn more about your programs and the Powerful Women Rising community? Yeah, absolutely. I would love to connect with everybody on Instagram. Um, I am at Powerful Women Rising on Instagram. So you're welcome to connect with me there. Send me a DM. Um, tell me that you heard this podcast and um, I would love to chat with you there. Not like a salesy weirdo, like a human. <laughs> and um, you can also check out my website, which is powerfulwomenrising.com. And that will give you a link to my podcast, to the Powerful Women Rising community, um, to these virtual speed networking events that I run and all of the things. So much goodness. Of course, I will link all of this in the show notes and just want to thank you again, Melissa. And of course, to all of our listeners, thank you so much for tuning in each and every week and for this episode today. If this one struck a chord or generated an insight that you'd like to capture, please do take a moment to comment, like, or share this episode. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss future shows coming out. Until next time, keep sharing your voice. 